It's grand final day here at the Heroes International Berlin 2023. Over here on the left, we got Kaldor, the man partly, mostly actually responsible for help putting this together. How have you enjoyed the weekend, man? Pretty much the time that we had, like it was long, long day, a very, very long day. We got some sleep, arrived early, and honestly, still blown away by how many people showed up. Yeah. And also how many people stayed, because as I mentioned yesterday, we had to close pretty much at nine o'clock, but everybody that was still at the venue was allowed to stay. Sure. And it's just like crazy when we got out of the booth, I think at midnight or something, how many people were still around. So yeah, absolutely incredible. I and, mean, and walking much, up here, there was 40 people already in line, like waiting to get in. Like, I didn't even see that. Yeah, I've been here ever since like eight, eight nine o'clock. So yeah, when I heard that, somebody said, wait, there's a queue. And I'm like, what queue? Huh? So yeah, pretty awesome. Good stuff. We got more good stuff coming your way, too. Should we talk about the extra bands that have gone through, thanks to support from the people at home? Exactly. So as already talked about yesterday, we had six bands initially, and we still have crowdfunding goals, which, which more heroes can be banned, up to 10 in total. And right now, for Saturday, we have eight hero bands because Dehaka and Lucio joined the heroes that are completely banned from draft. So obviously the crowdfunding still goes on and if people want to chip in to make sure that for the grand final even more heroes are banned out, yeah. I think two tanks are up next. If I'm not mistaken, it is Muradin and Anubarak who would be oh. next. Then uh, you can use exclamation mark bans in the chat, gives you a link and also should give you a list of the heroes. I just feel bad for these poor support and tank players. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I play? Don't you like Arthur's main tank? Yeah, I mean, Arthur's main tank is suddenly, that, I mean, telling you, we're getting closer and closer to that Butcher main tank. I mean, and that was the one thing that Jayhawk yeah, yeah. had it for years. So could be something that finally pops up. But so far, this tournament's been great. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying the show. As always, let people know if you haven't. I mean, let Caldor know. Uh, Kevin, of course, they put so much work into this. You know, I'm just an innocent bystander that gets invited, and I'm enjoying my yeah. time. But seriously, thank you so much for putting this together. It's been freaking awesome. And we got amazing teams playing today. Starting it off. Germany and Sweden. I love the production team has my back here. Like, I cannot deal with compliments, as you know. You so, did a good so, job, Calvin. So the, the second you say that, they move away towards the bracket. Love you, Ralph. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, we had amazing games yesterday. Obviously, it was quite a bit of an upset to see France, for example, being eliminated this early. They dropped to South Korea, who really, really stepped up their game after losing to Germany in the winner bracket semifinals. So today, we're starting things off with Germany versus Sweden. And then afterwards, it is the U.S. versus South Korea. Probably the match of yesterday was United States against Sweden. You cast it. An absolute bang. Yeah, I went all the way to game number five. Sweden really playing that compact gameplay. United States was evolving their meta as they went throughout the entire tournament. It was one thing that Kier mentioned when I walked by him. He was like, yeah, we usually start off slow. Last time, actually, Sweden did knock them in the loser's bracket in 2022. And then, of course, here in 2023, Sweden did the same thing once again. So uh, it's pretty interesting to see that history is repeating itself. And I wonder if the United States can push all the way through this bracket into the grand finals. You know their eyes are set on it. Yeah, I said it yesterday, but I have to say it again. They just terrify me because they get stronger the more games they lose, it seems. <laughs> they just gain some confidence where it's like, well, and now we go and we crush them. So that reverse sweep was a huge risk there. And you could tell that the Swedes were also getting a little bit uncomfortable once that they won the second map. It was like, <laughs> we didn't plan on five mapper here. So yeah. We'll see what happens today. But South Korea against uh, the US is obviously going to be big. But first, we're going to uh, switch over to Germany versus Sweden, which is also going to be a real highlight. Another best of five, the winner bracket final. Yeah, Germany so far has been on a tear. Right now, they haven't dropped a single map, if yeah. I am correctly. They're 6-0 and oh so far, keeping up on the winner's bracket. Something that they mentioned that, you know, they did practice, they've been prepared, but they didn't think it would be uh, such a strong showing from them. Obviously, as you come in here, you always want to respect your opponents, and Germany is definitely a team that does that. Uh, but we will have to see today if Sweden can even hold a candle it gives them because Germany is looking dominant. Yeah, Germany is looking really strong, but the Swedes, they've been picking up so much momentum. They True. look good in the round robin too, but the performance that they put in on the stage was just absolutely incredible. So it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a really interesting match that we have. And of course, the winner is going to qualify for the grand final, a best of seven series that a lot of teams apparently have already talked about a bit. What do we do if it goes to map six, to map number seven? How crazy are things going to go for us? So I really hope that we're going to get a seat. I mean, for me, I'm like, sucks to be you guys, but great to be us. Because we can to, like, make up part of this draft and everything, figure out what's happening. Because, like... We've gotten to the game four and game fives, and I'll be honest, those are some of my favorite games so far in yeah. this tournament because you are seeing those uh, situations. It's almost like watching a chef that's good at their job make something work, right? Yeah. Uh, and we get to watch these pros that are so good at the game really push themselves to the limits. All right, here, let's get this started here. Our best of five series, Germany and Sweden. Sweden will have the first man in the game. And do remember, 
More characters have been pre-banned. You can see them all at the bottom. The newest additions to Haka and Lucio. Thank you for your support. If you want to continue to support the tournament, last day here, just type in exclamation mark bans. You'll get all the information in our chat. And with Sweden and Germany now facing off against Towers of Doom, it doesn't really surprise too much that we have a first pick and first ban for the Swedes because this looks really like the comfort map for Germany. They love to play on Towers of Doom. Mm. And it's also where Sergeant Hammer gets immediately banned. But interestingly enough, this is a map where Vikings could be played. You could see Abatha again. And we've seen that a lot of teams respect that, not only from Germany, yeah. but other European teams too. And we did get Vikings from Germany in this tournament, and Sweden fully aware of that. Just echoing it right on the head here of what Caldor mentioned. Vikings immediately will get banned out. And I got to ask you, with the Haka being taken out, is Hogger and Urel probably the strongest top laners that we're going to have for this entire tournament? Left over? Hogger and Urel? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm wondering if we'll see that Urel popped out for either both of these teams. Germany thinking about it, they decided to take away Uther. So Uther gone. And there is still a lot of stuff out that both of them have been trying to dodge throughout the tournament. So I'm already getting excited here. I mean, one of the interesting things is that with the Haka band, he's also one of the strongest on Towers of Doom in particular. You mentioned him as a strong sideliner, of course. Yep. But he is also an absolute go-to for Swam Grotta uh, uh, as one of the players that probably excels with him the most. Also got our own Heroes of the Storm trophy here and medals that the players, the top three teams, are actually going to receive. So uh, this time we thought, well, trophy only one can bring it home. We're going to get some medals for them as well. I noticed they're different colors. Do we have medals for different teams or are they just different colors for all? First, second, and third place. Wow, look at you, man. Gold, silver, and bronze. So you're telling me that three out of the four teams is going to get medals today? Yes. Wow, feels bad to be that fourth team, man, to be so close. <laughs> those medals look really cool. It's either going to be the US or uh, Korea. One if I didn't have two. so much respect for you and Kevin, I may have pocketed one, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they look really cool. Uh, so there they are in their four, full glory, and all of our teams will be playing that. And, of course, the additional prize pool of $5,000 and plus whatever we have added from you guys at home. At this point, I mean, I'm already loving the draft. So first of all, we got Urel and Diablo up at the front, so that's already insanely beefy. You have, on the other hand, Tracer, and keep in mind what a lot of the teams, including South Korea, did against Germany and some others. They came in and they just continued to ban Tracer because they looked at the games that Dino played and they were just like, nope, that's not going to happen. Yeah. We're not going to do that. We have Tyrael, we have Karazim, very aggressive draft. And Nick in particular, he loves to throw out judgment whenever he sees a chance. He plays a much more aggressive Tyrael style, also reflected in the build. Leoric for the side lane rotation. So right off the bat, game number one, great aggressive drafts from both of the teams with lots of potential for huge team fights here in Towers of Doom. Can I just say really quick that Nick on tank is a pleasure to watch. I did not think someone that was so strong on these Silent Assassins, Kerrigan, etc. We've seen him play multiple uh, characters that deal massive damage, but here he knows what the damage dealer wants to do in a fight, and he's so good at switching and getting a yeah. punishing. Like we had him with Diablo in the first series yesterday. Mwah! I was, <laughs> oh God, I was loving it. <laughs> Medivh, on the other hand, coming in for the Swedes, that's also an interesting twist because this is one of the first times where we have Diablo with Medivh. So technically, you could now also go into Leyline, into Apocalypse. And Apoc has been picked up a bit more throughout the, yeah. the playoffs here. Normally, it was a lot of lightning breath and uh, every now and then the odd one, uh, an Apocalypse pick. But here you actually have a Wombo combo potential. Oftentimes a bit tricky to execute and to really line it up properly, so we might not even go down that path, but it's definitely something that has to be now in the back of Germany's mind when they're looking at what's possible for Sweden. Uh, I think that really came down to a lot of our supports nowadays uh, don't have as much cleanse because of a lot of the bands that we have yeah. able to. So it's not like all those CC trains that we have and are available in Heroes of Storm are that much more stronger. But we are ready for the final day to begin here. Game number one, we're about to hop into Towers of Doom. Quick question, Kaldor, who do you think won the draft? I mean, I'm going to go with my boys here. I'm Germany? sorry, but like we had a Nations Cup here, and as much as I cheer for Europe and as much as I love the Swedes, but uh, Germany is going to go all the way here. Grand final, easy. We're going to make it interesting. Yeah. It's going to be a 3 2 victory. Oh, uh, okay, of it's course. It's still going to be a W. Well, I'm going to go with Sweden just to one, oppose you because I like uh -huh. doing that. It makes me happy inside. But also, I saw Sweden this morning walking up here. They were up early. They were ready to go. They got their breakfast in, and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. They are ready to break down and beat up anyone that shows against them. They actually told me that one of them didn't even come home yesterday, so they don't know exactly what happened there. Parties throughout the entire night. Maybe Possible that's... rumors, though, to yeah. try and throw people off the scent. You never know, man. That's what I would do. <laughs> I would. I'd be throwing out this PR. I'd be trying to let people know. Oh, yeah, Sandbagging he's right from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Game number one, Caldor. The honor is yours. On the left. 
side for Germany in this winner bracket final. We have Hazobs on Leoric, Dino on Tracer, it's Nick on Tyria with Death Knight, Rocking Karazim and Ultralisk on Malthael. Far right playing for Sweden, it's Henning on Stukas, from Granta on Urel, Lauber on Diablo, Skog on Sylvanas and Gia showing the Medea. Lauber channeling his inner breeze here with the toxic Diablo skin, I like it. But yeah, very aggressive draft from them. So obviously with Medivh, the portal plays, Sweden has shown them in the past, you can be so aggressive, can just make sure Diablo gets a good angle on the opponent. Portal control not really existent on the side of Germany. Every time you have a Medivh player against you, you just love to have a Stukov, you love to have a Malfurion, maybe even an ETC, anybody that can control the portal sides. Not so much the case here, so Germany will have to see how they're going to deal with that situation. We've been seeing a lot of Tyrells kind of uh, skip over Holy Grail, but because of the Medivh portal being here, do you think Nick makes the adjustment at 13 to get the uh, Holy Ground to make sure that they can control that portal? That could actually be a good choice for them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, Nick is oftentimes playing a very aggressive style, but we'll have to see. What I honestly am always curious is if he's going to, if he's going to pick Judgment or not. Sure. Because you know he always wants to. But there's like the team call, and it's just like, okay. It's a cool animation. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. It, it the whole wind is. up, like, Tyrion looks when like a badass. he played in a Battlefield of Eternity yesterday, he just YOLO'd it out at some point every time the cooldown was ready, so <laughs> yeah. let's go. He took a 20, right? So it was like every 30 seconds. Exactly. He running it. And he had top damage with Tyrion <laughs> for the long longest time during the game, so it was pretty incredible. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to those level 10 abilities and to see what exactly he's going to do. Because technically, you could now come in and use Judgment Material, 7-sided Strike Carriers, even maybe even Last Rites. The problem is the Medivh pick on the other yeah. side, so you have to play around the shield a lot if you're trying to use that particular combo. Another issue here is the healing is quite low for Germany. Malfield kind of does his own thing with the healing on the side, but they also have traded off a lot of that aggression, which I think Tyrion matches into. You have Tracer moving in, drops the Pulse Bomb. If she gets in trouble, can recall away, and Karazim can come in and finish off. So I like that you pointed that out. There is a lot of hyper aggression, but you're right. We will have to keep an eye on Gia. Oh my gosh, Asu! Styling on Urel! The old man! Showing oh the young gosh. kids how it's done here. Get off my lawn, he the, says. The janitor taking out the trash at the top. Lane. Damn wow. Some. My gosh. Meanwhile, the sappers were grabbed on the bottom side, so Yorel will be suffering for a little bit. A slight experience miss there for them. Lauber, meanwhile, keeps continuing to f see what he can find out about the opposing team, and each time they have answered back in kind, Gia is going to have to be around a lot, because poor Diablo is taking the brunt of the damage. Yes, from Grotta here with a tactical pause. I mean, like, boys, it wasn't me. It wasn't my PC. So, we'll see what exactly the issue was there, but, yeah. Well, we want to make it. <laughs> if you're going to have pauses, I'd rather be in game one. Get it all figured out now. You know? Chatty Meadle is like, ah, he's not used to dying. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, he's like, I have to check something out. And someone wrote Kappa. <laughs> all right, sure. <laughs> That's what's great about the European scene here is uh, everyone is like so friendly. Even though here competition, they're playing for, you know, keeps or wanting to get their W's and earn the victories. Everyone so afterwards is so friendly. And even in a moment of pause here, they can joke back and forth. It's what I love about coming out and being a part of this experience. And again... You're part of the reason why this is happening, so. Actually, they are mentioning something that also happened the other day. Like, yesterday, there was, like, an instance where apparently the Hakka's Borough couldn't be... It wasn't audible, which is, like, an odd one. I personally Weird. think that Blizzard stealth buffed. So we actually got a balance patch, so... Ah, finally. thankful on that end. Thank you, Blizzard, for that. Appreciate that. Hey, he's wearing the same shirt as I am. Look at that. Wow. Is he? Yeah, look at that. We got the white going on. Mine's buttoned You up. mean it has the same color? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, it's, not, it's not the, it's same, the shirt. same shirt. It's the, the same, same color, color same right, shirt. Man. What's the difference? Well, I was going for the, the Mormon schoolboy look today, and so is he. Oh. Here we go. Straight to the match here. Well, at this point, we have the one kill for Germany, so they tried to figure out whatever was happening there and fix it. So I'm not sure what exactly was going on, but usually it's just a couple of small things on the first day. First time you set up on stage here. Maybe the mouse not properly adjusted, or you have some audio issues. But either way, the talents are kicking in, and with that, we've got now the Paralyzing Rage also for Leoric. Already rotated me between the lanes. House must be pretty happy with that, the kill that he got against Zirel. Malfield moving into the Throwing Shade here at level 4, looking to get that cooldown reduction, but also the range increase. Uh, makes it a little bit more of a pokey style for Malfield. You want to try and hit as many targets as possible, which makes it harder for Medivh to land the Force of Will on the right target if everyone's taking damage. Stacks, of course, so Medivh we're going to keep an eye on that too. Currently sitting at 11, trying to get that completed as quickly as possible. And, well, the first altar phase coming up. So, 
Time to see who's going to take the initial lead here. Lauber's, of course, with the Arblo, just looking for a good angle to get some stuns out. Nick will have to be careful against him, too. But yeah, I'm super excited for this winner bracket final. These teams have been beasting it yesterday, and they're going to do their best to move straight to the grand final. Nobody wants to go through the loser's bracket. Nobody wants to play those extra games. If you win now, you have the rest of the day to yourself. You can oh, chill, you can hot review, you can practice and scrim a little bit. Whatever really works best for you. So they're going to do their best to make that happen. And well, this is kill number one for Sweden. That has actually been the main setup so far for Sweden. They've been looking for the Karazim, trying to lock him down, has Stukov Arp come in. It's always been a second late the last couple of engagements, but that one was clean. Properly on point, Henning was able to bring in the silence, therefore Karazim couldn't jump out. And a quick kill to Sweden as they work for the next altar in the top right. Azov is just wasting Svam Gros' time as much as he can. And now that Tracer comes over, they can needle him down even a little bit more. But of course, we have for the red team also some heroes moving topside. Yeah, Dino not going to get caught by that. Gets out some extra easy damage. And that's it right there. Level 7 kicks in. And everybody gets ready for mid-game and level 10 abilities. As these portals are still threatening kills. So I like the rotational play uh, from Sweden. Almost had a pick there on Dino. I think Lobber may have actually misclicked and hit the uh, top portal. He came back in and went uh, back up to the top. But still, I like that I'm seeing Sweden bring in that aggression. They were a little bit more compact yesterday in their matches, being closer together. Uh, macro gameplay seemed to be one of the things that was uh, starting to hurt them overall. But here we see them moving across the map, using these portals to full fruition there, and love to see it. Sapper Camp now being grabbed to the bottom right. Looks like Lobber should be able to get that pretty easily. Yeah, and they are now both focusing on the bot lane, trying, of course, to get that bot lane control, which is so important in Towers of Doom. Most of the mercenary camps are traveling through that. You have an, uh, a way to directly damage your opponent's core and a much easier access to the bottom altar if you're ever, ever in a position where you hold both of the bell towers down here. So they're trying to structurally take oh. them on as quickly as they can. Here comes the portal, though. Here comes Lauber. And Germany needs to retreat. It's a five versus four as Leo still finds himself at the top lane. And during all that movement, that, gosh, that was so pretty by Sweden. I wish I could take a, a quick look at it. Uh, we saw... Sylvanas slowing down the sapper so that they could focus him down as they were charging straight into the turret, but also were setting up to move in and try to put aggression on a Germany. That was some great small micro for Sweden, and it pays off in dividends. So I'm granted continuing that 1v1. Haswab seems to have his number here on that top lane. Lior continuing to be the badass that he is. Yeah, Leo is... I absolutely love Leo as a character. A little bit more laid back on the playstyle most of the time, but he's been so dominant on so many maps. Obviously also great on, uh, in, on Tomb, on Infernal Shrines. Definitely one of the staples on the side lane, especially with all of the heroes that are not available to the teams anymore, like Blaze and Dehaka, for example, would probably have pri taken priority over him on Towers of Doom, at least. Trump Gantas rotating in. Sweden wants to fight here, trying to force an engagement on Lobber. Lobber's starting to turn around, though, has that Shadow Charge. And the throw of need be, Swamp Gantas comes in. There goes for a knockback. Nick taking some damage, bringing out the shield at the same time. Dino, however, going straight for the yeah, they got the heroic Judgment! And of course it's Judgment. Nick coming in, last rites denied by wow. Medi. Nicely done. All of this possible because Hazo Ops was still soaking experience in the mid and top lane as Sweden was trying to fight five versus four. Germany with some really nice moves once that level 10 kicked in and they also got the channel on the altar at the bottom of the map, which is very nice for them. They could not get the kill though. Last rites was blocked by Medi. Nick was trying to put, apply pressure to Medivh himself to deny that, but it didn't quite work out. So a nice recovery from Sweden, but of course they had to give up that bottom lane all time. That force of will was like half a second off from being incorrect there, but it was just perfect timing from Sweden, saving their teammates. Now two heroics were used, and now Sweden has all five up and available, and there are sappers here available to still. If they would like, they can move in and try and take those, and using heroics to try and break on the bottom side is always a good play. The Auric bait in the fight here in the middle. Able to Wraith walk away, and Sweden instead just pushes the middle lane. Medivh is getting closer and closer to complete his quest. He's sitting at 32. This is really the moment where you want to be a little bit stingy with your shields and make sure that you apply them to yourself. Sure, yeah. So, can't die here. But once again, that little engage. I like how Sweden is just looking for opportunities here and always tries to get a good portal rotation going, trying to collapse onto a single target. Whereas for Germany, we have just Leo continuously rotating between the lanes. Urel is making more moves to try and create a numbers advantage. But now talking about her, Urel has to pop the ult as Nick 
force the fight with judgment. So again, this aggression that we see from Nick as a frontliner. Typically, a melee assassin, a damage dealer, and he can definitely see that come through whenever he plays in the tank position. I mean, just in terms of numbers, you mentioned Hasuop is constantly double soaking. He's the highest in the game with 9,500 experience. Urel is right behind him. We've seen Urel do a couple of ganks at 8,700. This is kind of what you have to do in the side lane, especially on Towers of Doom. Urel now stepping up and trying to trade out with Hasuop with that creepy hand connecting. Won't be able to get any damage, but look at this. Another brawl in the middle. And they, these fights are so close. Uh, one cooldown misses and a member falls right away, but both teams are playing lights out. One of the problems here also for Medivh in particular is that you have last rights that you want to uh, dodge. You have yeah. a seven-sided strike that you're trying to shield, and you have on top of that Tracer, which just comes in with a bump all the time. So it's a little bit tricky. You can't dodge all of it, so you really have to prioritize heavily. And up to now, Sweden has done a fantastic job coordinating in these fights, but you can tell that it's going to get difficult once these 5v5s break out. Dino jumps into your back lane, tries to go for the squishies. You have Judgment that you also have to take into consideration. So there's a lot of fantastic tools for Germany here as the teams are trading alters again. But up at the top, seven-sided strikes from Grotta. He doesn't have the oh. cooldown, but the two misses Hazu. Just barely whiffing there. Now Sweden takes a chance to turn it around. They look at Haas, who's getting low on HP. He's trying to survive here. Drain Hope will keep him alive for the moment. And now Germany, there's a party in the top lane. <laughs> They're really going for it right now. There's the shield. Dine who trying to dive in. Last That's right. right. And there's the kill. The quest completed for Medivh at least, but they lose Stukov. They don't have the support. Ultra is looking for a second kill. Can't get it just now, but Swam Grotta is incredibly low. Gets the shield, tries to rush out. The ley line to save the day. Gia, low, but Nick cannot close the gap. Still, that fight had two or three swings all the way through, and only one person was picked off, Stukov. Henning is sadly being the uh, benefactor of the last right, and that's going to be some cooldown reduction for Malfiel. Honestly, this kind of has a bit HTC old school vibes with it, with how the teams are only looking at three deaths right now, three yeah. kills, 10 minutes in. So obviously not quite the same level of play anymore since nobody is just training 12 hours a day like in uh, the old days, but still that Respect for the opponent, the coordination in the team fights, not going full YOLO, retreating, trying to gather your forces, just topping yourself off at one of the fountains and re-engaging is exactly what we saw back in those days. And another fight breaking out over Mercenary Camp as he has the stun and the kill mid he falls. But at the West same time, counterattack. The Entomb actually locks in a couple on the top left side. Tracer and Leoric will fall. Death Knight also get low HP score. Going for the arrow. Flies across the map and gets the hit. Swamp so Granta trying to find Ultralisk. Gets the Unstoppable at the right time. Lobber does have some abilities. Decides to go ahead and back away and take the altar instead. It was 28 to 28, but now the tie is broken as Sweden will take the lead. 28 to 24. Skog with an absolute beast mode there. Triple kill by Sylvanas. Particularly the last one against Karazim was just fantastic. He gets the hit in on the last second before Karazim is able to dive away. It's an advantage for Sweden now. Still a bit of a lead in experience, but yeah, that was a pretty sick fight, honestly. Let's take a replay and look at it here as we head straight into the match. You saw right away, Portal's on the top right side. The Pulse Bomb comes in. The Force of Will is used, so Dino goes, you know what? I'll focus Gia. Judgment to follow in from Nick. But look at this Entomb. It actually locks two in the top right corner. They can't get out. Tracer gets completely deleted, and Skog keeps up the pressure. He chases down Death Knight. Watch this as he moves forward with the W. Auto attack. Boom! Gets the kill, and that is three down. Yeah, that was awesome. Really well played here. Sweden with a fantastic win, netting themselves three kills, and both teams heading towards level 16. Only game number one in the winner bracket final here at the Nations Cup. 16 to 15, Sweden's right behind them in experience, backing up and trying to keep these trades working out. One thing that we do need to note is that top right corner, that fort has been taking a beating throughout this entire match, and it's a sliver away from falling victim to death, which would go over to Germany and, Germany and increase their points. Definitely a testament to Hazel's map control throughout the game and his lane push, but we have more fights breaking out. Hazel is coming in, they're trying to go for Henning, and Stukov is dead. The Admiral gets demoted once more. The Entomb on point. There's the last right. Another stack for Ultralis. 
sitting at 2 now for the cooldown reduction. Germany fighting back, making sure that Sweden cannot just simply walk away with this game. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect. Triple altar spawning, and Sweden still has 20 seconds until Stukov is back on the map. Perfect for Germany, but devastating for Sweden. Diablo now very low on HP, doesn't have his souls there. He did reset, and with no Stukov here as well, they're not going to force and engage. All they'll take is a small consolation prize with a couple of shots, and we are tied up once again yeah. here, Galdor. 20 points to 20. Very close in the experience, too, and in kills, of course. And time for some camps again. 36 stacks also for the Arden Defender for Tyrael. We got Diablo slowly getting his soul stacks back. And I'm still eyeing that ult of Maltael. If he is able to get a few more seconds of cooldown reduction, those late game fights are going to be even more problematic for Sweden since Gia has to. Yeah, he has to really prioritize his, his shields here. It's not going to be easy for him. I talked about this earlier, but there's so many things that he has to pay attention to now. So if that cooldown on Malthale's ult gets reduced even more, it's going to be incredibly difficult for him. Sokrata comes in for the flank, but Nick with a clever use of Eldruin, able to dash back and head forward without Lobber being able to lock him down. And Sweden misses out on that kill. And Leoric took that swing in the top lane and now has full control of it and one lone sapper going straight to the core taking the lead at 20 to 19. Germany is doing this a lot from the start they had Leo just on the side lane over and over and over again Urel on the other hand is always trying to come in help the team out create a numbers advantage and then they're going for fights but they just can't get enough kills right now they like this situation though per perfect line line they isolate Maltail and that's the kill that they wanted really well executed Sweden sees the opportunity the play works out, it's well coordinated, and they get rewarded with a kill against Maldale. This is their chance. Diablo goes in, Lobber slams Death Knight on the ground. Death Knight able to dash to his teammate, but a silence comes out. There's no more dashes available. Can oh. Death Knight get out? And a tune to lock him down. He goes to seven sided. Here's a pulse bomb, but a force of will. Gia is on point. The Yorick <laughs> finally will fall. Death Knight lives. Nick comes in, knocks Skog into the side, but Skog turns off the tower and doesn't have to worry about 11 it. 11 hit points as Death Knight escapes. Leo will be back a lot sooner, so definitely the better trade here, but they also lose Terriel. And that's a completely different story. Nicely done by Sweden. The chase with the portal. Fantastic. Germany doing their best to keep their heroes alive. A fantastic entomb initially from Leoric to try and shield Karazim, who got away with 10 HP. But now it's a double altar channel for Sweden. They get another eight shots fight against Germany and drop the blue team down to 12 points on the corner. And great awareness by Strom Granta. He waited just long enough for that bell tower to go down. So he got the four shots as well as the four in the bottom. A total of eight, and as you mentioned it, 19 to 12, Sweden in the lead, but this game could still go either way. What's still incredible to me is that even with these fights and also with the kills that Sweden now got, Germany has this tiny sliver of a lead in experience. So again, the side lane soak was fantastic, but now they have to try and also recover at the bottom of the map. You want to take the bell tower back as quickly as possible. Inevitable end had to be used by Ultra Skia as the red team was trying to lock him down too. But they're going to poke on this bell tower as much as possible now to reclaim control. Nick gets in, gets off a smite, hits Skog. Skog is holding down here and Henning. Luckily, can just be down here the entire time and keep that poison, or not that poison, the uh, green substance, continuing to spread amongst his teammates and keep them nice and healed up while Sompgranta can start working back on that top lane. But the thing is, Hasu doing Hasu things. He's grabbing the sappers once again. Yep, and he has level 20. So they have the advantage. Upgrade on Judgment again. And we get the Epiphany too. So here we are. We get the Entomb upgrades. There's actually a lot of really fantastic tools now. The cooler reduction alone on Judgment is just yeah. great. He has the extended range. We now have the Silence on Entomb. So a lot of fantastic tools that they can use in these team fights to really take quick control and shut down synergies between the Swedish players. Can they pull it off though? Because the ley line plays and also the plays around the portals from Sweden have been great. And if they are able to get one of these flanks in again, then they could quickly take someone out on the side of the blue team. Gia continuing to spy on his opponents, scouting out where they are. Sees Hossilov's in this bush on the right side as Sweden is rotating down for this one lone altar. 20 to 20, and this team fight is completely fair as both teams are set up on the heroics. Lobber fully stacked on his souls as well. He goes in for engage, hits the Lee Work, unstoppable Wraithwalk comes in, judgment on the back line. Immediately going for Stukov as the lurking arm came out, trying to ensure that he cannot set up the team for a kill. Lauber 
are being very low here, and it's Ultralisk in particular that is poking them. And the choke point is just so bad for Sweden right now. They are trying to get back with a portal. They can always try and portal behind the opponent's team, but it's getting really tricky here, and they're already starting to give ground. Malfiel on that poke, just continuing to be on Relentless, dropping down that shade. Finally, Ultralisk will get that channel. Four shots flying across the map, bringing the score 12 to 15. Sweden still on the lead. Hugely aligned seal, though. Lobber's moving in, having a combo available. Goes straight for the back line. Karazim, seven sided strike. Here comes the judgment. <laughs> the Hellgate was awesome by Diablo, but he got dodged by a seven sided strike. And now they're chasing once again. The Swedes had to retreat, and Germany is trying to go for the camp. But Urel is moving in, hoping to claim it for Sweden. It's not quite working out yet. The ult already had to be used. They're taking the camp and they're pushing Lauber back Diablo on the back foot. And Sweden just doesn't seem to be in a position where they can get that kill. Germany just keeping up the damage. Every time they walk away from the fight, they're all full HP, which is impressive to see. Sweden having a hard time going in for a full dodge. Karazim was actually completely locked down. Death Knight there, but he immediately yeah. seven-sided strike. And Diablo was left to just go, uh, and then he got picked <laughs> off completely there, right? Especially Ultralisk is just poking the entire time. Yeah. He's top damage in the game at this point. It's three heroes that are battling for the top numbers. Tracer, Malthael, and Sylvanas. They are all very similar, rough, around 65, 66,000 damage. But it's Ultralisk that is really excelling in these team fights that we had in the last few minutes. And you can tell, Diablo and uh, all the frontliners, they are suffering. I mean, that really comes down to that level 4 pickup that Malfiel has, that throwing shade, just having that extra range and the cooldown reduction when these fights last a while. Yeah, you get two or three pokes in with off of one force of will cooldown. It's such a good trade. The Germans are very good at throwing shade. It's always <laughs> happening. <laughs> Professional smack talkers. Judgment across the map. Nick comes in for the back line. Force of will at the last second. Will be able to hold on. Gia on the top right. Seven sided strike. It's a huge <laughs> steal, but Medivh gets picked off. And now Sweden is walking with their tails between their legs. Last right, just as the ley line came through, trying to save himself, but the last right still connected. The kill against Medivh, and now they're retreating. Leo falls, but they're still on the chase. Diablo using the Hellgate, dropping his ult too, trying to zone Germany out, but Stukov falls. Lauma might be in trouble too. He dies, he had the souls. He'll be back, but still a big, big victory for Germany and more map control. They already have five to three bell towers. Two altars are up and the shot are being fired any second. The boss is up as well. A <laughs> lot of opportunities now for the German team. Nick keeps up that El Druin. Every time Lobber comes in, he's able to break it there. Another judgment once again, and Sweden leads yeah, another correct. member for 65 seconds. Alter will be channeled, and now Germany, they have a boss play available to them. If they want, they can go and try and win the game, or just take all the towers and finish it easily. Absolutely. Tyriel with these judgments. 15 second cooldown. He could go for it again. Lauber already struggling here. There's the last rides. Bye bye, Diablo. That's four stacks also for Malthael. More cooldown reduction, more damage, and they're going for that bell tower. This is the big opportunity. Sweden is down to 10 points. And now boss plus altar will end the game in favor of Germany. Okay, there is a situation here where Gia can hit the ley line seal and try to steal it away. Yeah, good he luck. drops down, there <laughs> goes the judgment. Gia completely trying to escape here. Okay, buying some time, teleports away. A lot of time. Gets back on the bird here, but the uh, boss did not reset, and Hasselab is also going for a channel. Henning's trying to slow that down on the right side, buying time for his teammates, but I don't know if they have it. I mean, it's nearly impossible, but you have to give them some credit for trying. They yeah. have such a good effort trying to slow them down. But it's just not working. Yes, Sylvanas is back. They're trying their best here, but they're going to lose Henning any second now. Stukov doesn't stand a chance. Another kill for Germany. Mediv is gone too. And Sweden is looking at their first loss in this best of five. The channel is happening, and Germany takes it on Towers of Doom. One of their best maps in the showcase. It once again, Germany won, Sweden zero. That's the type of game one that I want in a best of five series yeah. right there. The game was close all the way until the end. And then, of course, once that one kill hit Gia, it was just a constant floodgate. The Germanys turned up the aggression and, of course, ran them down as much as they could and were able to earn the W. What a fun start to the tournament. Absolutely. And as you said, it was Medif trying to save himself with a ley line. Yeah. Couldn't catch all of that before the last rights came through. He dies, and then immediately everybody on the Swedish team was like, we got to get the hell out of there right now. And they lost too many on the way back. It's actually kind of funny because we also talked a bit about Ultralist yesterday. Every single time he got bored with the game, he just like said, okay, guys, let's go, and popped off and killed several. 
And Dahazu wrote something on Twitter where he said, like, well, Ultralisk is absolutely wrecking the opponent's team, but at the same time, I'm always getting information from him that he said that he accidentally pressed I because he played so much <laughs> Diablo 4 that the massive memory is kicking in, so he's looking for his inventory. <laughs> and so it's like, all right, buddy, make sure that you got your hotkeys set up properly or you're going to be in trouble here. I mean, that kid is a very talented individual. And the great yeah. part about him, too, is he's young and happy, right? Like, you look at him, he's constantly they smiling. They let him drive. <laughs> he's allowed to drive. Okay. No, he drove is that legal? Here. Can they do that? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you say that, and actually, for a second there, I was like, wait, is he actually old enough to drive? <laughs> uh, regardless, Ultralist has been killing in this tournament, and I would say everyone played very, very good in game number one. Sweden themselves should be proud of that. That was some great yeah. control, great teamwork, and I love the constant aggression of using the portals. Like That, sh that shows you when you have a Medivh on the team, and if the team is playing well around those cooldowns and being able to portal in the Force of Wills, how in sync they are, and they are looking stellar here for game number one. I'm ready for game number two already. We have to wait for the draft, but I just want to go. When you see Midi plays like this, you always make the same mistake. You're like, oh my god, this is so awesome. I need to do this in Storm League right now. And then you see, you see the portal. And you throw a portal no, and everyone Nobody uses it. it. <laughs> Just like, man. <laughs> or you trust your Medivh that's a portal pointing up. It's like, okay, he probably has a reason for that. You go in and everybody just dies. Yeah. <laughs> that's the other variation. It, so, yeah. Communication and coordination kind of required for that one. Well, with that being said, if you haven't been watching the tournament for us all weekend, do be aware that if a team has already picked characters, it can no longer be played in the best of five. So everyone that you just watched is unplayable going into game two, three, four, and five. And we'll continue that trend going forward. Now, our second map has been chosen, and we are going to Cursed Hollow for map yep. number two. Awesome. Love it. And another map where we're likely going to see either, well, could be both, Abatha and Vikings addressed. And again, we have more pre-bands now. So yesterday, when we started into the first day of the tournament, six heroes were totally unavailable for the entire competition. Mm -hmm. Now, thanks to people donating to the GoFundMe, which you can check out if you use exclamation mark bands in the chat, you're going to get a link. We have two more banned out, and one of them includes Tehaka, a hero that is fantastic on Towers of Doom, but also great on Cursed Hollow. So he would have been a go-to for both of these teams, but sure. now that Lucio and Tehaka are not available any longer, they have to really think how they are going to address this. And as pointed out before, of course, the draft, the draft numbers might change the pre-bans for the grand final, so any contribution to the tournament, to the GoFundMe, if you want to help us set up more tournaments like this, you can do it there. And if we are hitting one of those additional goals, more heroes will be banned. And just in case that this wasn't clear, this has been all communicated to the players already like a long time ago. They were fully aware how many heroes are maximum at a maximum banned out, which heroes would be hit next. They're familiar with the Meta Madness concept as well, that this is a light version of. So there is nothing where all of a sudden admin walks over five minutes before the game says, oh, yeah, by the way, you can't figure it out, guys. Exactly. So they've already been in the know. So this is not a surprise to any of them. And they were always able to check with admins and were immediately informed when a new hero was removed. Yeah, if you uh, follow these players on Twitter, whatnot, let them know that you appreciate that they're down with this type of tournament. I think it adds a lot of fun and creativity to yeah. Heroes of the Storm. It's something that was uh, needed uh, very much, in my opinion. So it's very cool to see that they are down with this and they are adjusting and learning the game and giving us more fun ways to watch Heroes of the Storm. So let them know because the players are the reason why we are here and why we get to watch these amazing games. Okay, it sounds like we're getting ready for the draft. Everyone is readying up. One thing to remember with Dahaka being banned out, there is still one global on the board that can be played and would be huge here. Falstead. Uh, true. <laughs> you got more to add to the other no, point? No, no, I'm not going to lie. I was waiting for some kind of like weird murky strategy or, or planet cracker stuff. You're going game soft four. on me these no, days. No, game four. You're game actually four. going for like a meta hero. It's like, what happened to you? You ever like swim up a tide? Like a, a big, like you go surfing and like the big waves are coming yeah. in and you keep swimming and eventually you get tired, man. You're just like, I'm tired of fighting everybody. So <laughs> You're getting tired of the murky place. I, I'm the getting lava old, man. You know, like I don't, I don't have those dreams anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what, guys? I'll coast on the, on the creek here and move forward. All right. All right, draft is live. Let's move into it for game number two in this best of five series. Germany is up one to zero. Germany with the lead in the best of five. The 10 heroes that have been played on map number one are not available anymore. In addition to that, the eight heroes that you can see down below are also unavailable, so they have to adjust their drafts a little bit. All of this is going to get a bit more crazy when we're heading into game number four and game number five, but even now it's going to have an impact. Bands. No surprise here. Vikings, they're looking over to the Germans. Hazops is sitting right there, smiling at them. They're like, no, 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 this ain't happening. Abathur as well. Yep, both of them. Sweden has been showcasing more of a style that's more compact. They like to group up more than some of the other teams that we've seen today. Uh, so 
Vikings and Abathur are completely against that type of strategy. Yeah, they I, stretch you thin. I always thought that the Germans hate fun, and then I saw Sweden drafting, and they've, they've been <laughs> doing that already in the round robin. And people have also rightfully been complaining about it should be like the Swedes should be the Nordic countries that want to play the Vikings. You know, not ban them. That's so true. So they're definitely not in, in line with the thing. I would say Germany actually likes fun. It's just like the most bland fun I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. They, they, they like fun. It's just a different level. Are you level, telling me you know? I'm having fun wrong? Uh, I mean, you got moments. You know Caldor's having fun when he has a stupid little smirk on his face. He has his little dimples start going up. And I'm like, oh, what are you thinking about? And he's like, it sounded like a funny joke. And I'm like, okay, sure. And then he won't tell anybody. It's just in his head. <laughs> That totally doesn't sound like me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. No, I can't tell you. It's too funny. It's too Serious funny. Serious business. <laughs> Uther will be the first pick for Sweden. Yeah, Uther is in. And oh, oh, my head for Ultra Lisk. It's just so tough. Whatever you give this kid, it's going to be dangerous. And my F is one of his go-tos. And yeah, when if you're playing, you see that on the other side. You're just like, ah, this is not going to be fun. So we get that got Kane. We have Mayev. Keep in mind that a lot of the supports are actually banned out. So you can already see Anduin is gone, Brightwing is gone, Rhaegar and Lucio. That removes four supports right off the bat. And the two more have been eliminated by being played in game number one. So a little bit of a support show going on. And Sweden is doing what Sweden does. Every single series they play in one of the games, they bust out Zarya and Garrosh. And I'm pretty sure they haven't lost a single time yet in the round robin and in the playoffs when they had these two heroes. This is a different variation of what we had before. It was Stukov, Zarya, and Garrosh, so Uther will be slotted in for the support, and then usually it was paired up with a Vala or a Sylvanas. Vala is not available, actually, as Germany has realized that was what they have gone for, so they will need a back range damage dealer to try and bolster out, and I would love to see what their third option is. Suddenly Such an hammer. I was thinking Zul'jin, actually. Shields keep him yep. low. Yep. Uther yep. would keep yep. up with the armor, has his own heals backed in. And we haven't seen a Zul'jin, uh, but that would be more of a surprise for that fourth and fifth pick, right? Because he is one of those characters that doesn't really have that mobilization that you need on your assassins. Yeah, Zul'jin late game. Get a Sergeant Hammer in here. Anything just like hits like a truck. Yeah. If it was a Korean team, I would immediately now say Rainer. Rainer. After how many <laughs> Rainer games we've seen from them. They absolutely love him. They play. Have you asked them why, why they love Rainer so much? I haven't even had a chance to talk to yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what, what, what it is about it. And we get some top cake plays over here for oh, the old man. Yeah, Chen was the fourth pickup. He was a side laner, so they take away Chen. So now they're taking this composition that Sweden has been running, and they're deconstructing it and saying, okay, you have your foundation, but what do you do when you don't have the other parts? Oh, and apparently the venue is filling up as well. Yeah, big shout out to everybody. Welcome, That's guys. Thanks Welcome, for coming guys. out. You guys Thank are you awesome. very, very much. Heck yes. Mirrodin, Chen. And here comes Artanis and Hanzo. All right. Redemption. I'm down. Let's do it. Artanis has like a pretty good win rate yeah. <laughs> this weekend, actually. It's a little yeah. bit sad. It's, no, it's a little bit awesome. <laughs> for, me, for, for me, it's a little bit sad because I have, a, I have to stop. Remember we Artanis just show. talked about Germans not liking fun and then you got offended? <laughs> He's winning, it's awesome! And then he's laughing. See how he laughs to himself? I'm hilarious. <laughs> no, go ahead, say it. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Cassie will be the final pickup here. I like it against Artanis. Brings in Finn, brings in Blinds as well. What do you think about Sweden's adjustment with this draft? I didn't expect the Artanis pick, to be honest. I didn't either. Anzo, yeah, but even oh, Chris Hollow, too. Yeah, I honestly thought that they would go for, as you already said, maybe even take a page out of the Korean playbook, try Jimmy there, go for Sergeant yeah. Hammer, maybe even Suljin, because we have seen some Suljin games with comps like this. If you have Garrosh, you can just like flip the target over, Suljin has some guaranteed stacks. Yeah. Obviously, you then play for the late game, so you have to adjust a bit, and on Cursed Hollow, it's kind of tricky if you're losing the, uh, to the Curse, and it gets snowballed a bit too much. But at Tennis, it, that's a really beefy frontline that they now have, and Hanzo's main damage can work, provides an additional stun, of course, too, but I didn't really think they would go down that path with how they played with it before, I thought they would go for different options. I feel like Artanis has to be more of a look at, like, hey, what can we do with bosses here? You take a boss yeah. and Curse Hall, push down a lane, and then you put Artanis in the mix, and the boss gets on top of the keep, and then you just start burning it down with the amateur opponent, yeah. and you can kind of just go for this full all in style. So maybe that's what they're going to make for an adjustment, but it is a little peculiar. But on the other hand, you have Muradin for stuns, they got Kane for mm. follows up, there's Mayev for the tether, Chen to. There's a lot of tools that can be used, and just like a top kick play with Chen, if your opponent is trying to coordinate properly and you get that ult out, you can break so much synergy there. It could be a tough one for Sweden to coordinate properly. But well, 
Talking about the two teams on the left, we got Germany in game number two with the lead. 1-0 for the blue team. Dino playing Cassia. Shen played by Hazobs. Death Knight on Deckard Kane. Nick is playing Murden in the second game of the best of five. And Ultralisk on one of his go-tos playing Mayef. To the right in the red, hitting on Uther. Flabber playing Garrosh. Skog on Zarya. Sombranta going to be showing us his Artanis gameplay, and I will be keeping a watchful eye on him. And then Gia will finish it up with Hanzo. Man, I see Hanzo, and I just I am reminded of Kier's play yesterday with that five-man arrow. Oh my god. It is, you forget about <laughs> how deadly Hanzo can be sometimes. Yeah. You line him up in the choke point, one arrow ruins your entire I'm actually game. disappointed in the Heroes community for a second here. That was not posted to the Heroes of Storm subreddit, and plays like that should be showcased everywhere if you're a fan of Heroes of Storm. So someone needs to get on that for me. He made so many good plays yesterday with Hanzo. Yeah. It's actually spectacular. So yeah, when you're in a dire situation, it's always good to have Q on your team. <laughs> I think we were in the middle of a giggle fest, and then all of a sudden we were just like, oh my god, five man arrow! <laughs> like, it was like, it just took everyone's attention. It was breathtaking, if you will, like Keanu Reeves. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can't get behind that. I was like, where are you heading with this? This is going to be awkward again, but no, I, I get that. Just facts is what I draw, yeah. man. It's not awkward. Just facts. A little bit disappointed here from Sweden. So, yeah, they dropped the ball slightly. I really think... I honestly had high expectations, uh, but inting on the spray game, it is something that I would have maybe let pass if it was the French, but now from Sweden, I expect more after what they showed so far. I was a little bit worried for uh, Sam Granta there with him trying to swap. Sometimes you don't want to waste your swap cooldowns, but he was able to get away. He knew his teammates were on the way for the rotation. And the camps will be grabbed now. And this is probably where you're going to start seeing the Zarya be effective. They usually grab the night camp and then use that wizard spell armor and uh, attempt to push as hard as they can in the middle lane. Germany being well aware of this and seeing it played twice in this tournament is already answering back with their own night camp in the middle. Yeah, and personally, I really want for the first few fights to break out where we can see the CC chain from Germany because I really need to see if they can get that probably chained up to really threaten some of these targets. It's such a beefy lineup that we have from Sweden. Uther gets attacked though, and they already have with Tether and Slows dropped quite a few of his hit points here. Push of shielding coming out. You saw his summer tennis players being shut down completely yesterday, and if Germany is able to do the same thing here, you mentioned the order attacking, then uh, that could happen here again, but you need to make sure that you really lock the target down hard, and that's going to be difficult against what Sweden is running here with the extra shield from Zarya, the burst healing from Uther. And of course also stuns that can even slow the entire process down as Hanzo is attempting to give you a little bit more breathing room. That's another factor that I was thinking about, even with uh, Artans being taken here from Sweden, at least he denied it from Dino, who's been one of the best Artans in this tournament. Big fight here in the middle though, as Lobber is tethered, he walks forward, low on HP, can anyone hit him? No! 90 HP and he's walking back in! Jin about to rotate over though, and Hasu <laughs> jumps on him and belly kegs him. Yeah, Fat Illidan comes in, drops him, but the counter kill still happens. After Garrosh gets taken down, we have the kill Ooh. on IF, and everybody else just chasing out. Gia is somehow still alive here. And Hasu might get him, is still trying, but I think he's too far away. For a second, I thought maybe he's going to use the wall to jump over and see if it's close if he's close enough. But that wasn't the case. So Hanzo is actually able to survive and hearth back home. That was Hasu's experience showing. He goes, like, I'm in the middle of a tournament. He's pretty much effectively dead already. He has to back. There's no point in diving into a tower to get that kill. And he just peels over and grabs the experience instead and pushes the lane. Tributes are, of course, now up. So we are talking top side. The red team has decided to not take their siege chance at the Ooh. bottom. Didn't also have a lot of time for that. Lobber, nice tanking, right? Yeah, you deserve that. <laughs> Feel that moment. Feel your oats. Hell yes. What were we saying this morning? Yes, Queen. Let's go. Exactly. Caldor hates a yes, Queen. <laughs> I haven't even watched that series, like not even a single second, and it's just the reference itself is just like, ugh. I told him it's a new Woo Girl, and he's like, oh, okay, now I understand. Woo! I mean, honestly, the only reason why I know about Woo Girls in the first place is literally how I met your mother. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good so, stuff. Yeah. We'll get you there. One day we'll get you to Woo. It'll be a great day. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you can have that. I thought Germans like fun. That's a thing all day. I'm going to bring that up every time. Uh -huh. Maev gets the dodge here for Ultralisk. Garage gets the knockup. 
And we're going to have our trades out here in the middle. But so far, between these two teams, I got to say, our early games have been great trades, been constant aggression, but nobody is taking a situation and overdoing it, yeah. which is like a really good display of what they know, that, how to play Heroes of Storm. And as you say, that Dino is caught and gets... Ah, no, he knows. He lives this. Yeah, he, knows. he gets the safety from Death Knight. No, they definitely know where the line is. You can definitely tell. But this time, the Tether, it connects, and Lauba Lover! might just have gone a little bit too deep. He goes down. But it's all good, and you know why? Why? He told me that if you don't die a lot as a tank, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. No. I agree. Yeah. Lobber knows his stuff, man. I think that's just an excuse for him always dying in the first minute, and <laughs> oftentimes after the first 30 seconds. But still, he told me I need to pass that on, uh, that pearl of wisdom. And he's just following his own advice here. Yeah, helpful as a resource. Well, speaking of death, Sweden now starting to have a bit of an issue here as Germany is starting to find these moments mm -hmm. where they can capitalize another CC train hitting Sweden and Germany pulling ahead on that race to level 10. Yeah, so now they're half a level ahead, three kills to one, gaining a bit of map control in the process too, opening the top side up. And it's a bit annoying for Sweden here. So Germany with an early level 10, let's see what they can do. Are they just trying to sneak a boss away? Are they trying to push one of the forts down? They definitely have a bit of a window that they could utilize to do either. I would love them to try and take away boss fights, because yeah, here, Sweden, this is definitely one of the bread and butters they're going to go for. They have Hanzo, who's a shredder of the boss. They have Zarya, which is great to push, especially with Artanis helping out. Artanis does scout in the bottom left, so they take what they can here. Nick is being annoying, but there's no way he's going to jump in here and try and do anything. Yeah, he was just hoping that Sweden would be threatened by it and maybe back off, but he was just posturing, getting some information as everybody else on the German team moved down to the bottom left in order to get their own boss. Funnily enough, Sweden locked it in first and they now have their own level 10 abilities. I'm actually surprised they didn't push with it, but instead they got the night camp in the middle, which I guess makes more sense, right? Now you're in a position where you can get some pressure on both lanes and you can go defend the bottom side. Yeah, you know what? I like it more. Yeah, Keck is in. They got Kane is still holding it back though. Stay a while and listen on the little NATO, one of the two. But well, everybody's just defending. And they, we've talked about this before. So far in the series, game number one, but also in the second map, everybody is like trying to get a couple of fights going, but they're always cautious. They know where the line is. They move back. They're not too aggressive. Nobody just commits and says, okay, either we win this and we take a big lead or we yeah. lose and then it's going to be tough to recover. Nobody wants to give an edge here. So you just look yeah. for opportunities. You poke and prod and you hope for your opponent to make a small mistake that you then can exploit. Tech Kane was waiting on picking his heroic and moves him to stay a while and listen, which has been the main pick for this entire tournament. I don't think we've seen a single Lord Nato. Usually really good with Leoric and Tombs, but I don't think we've seen them paired. No, not really. Uh, well, we have another tribute. This is actually a curse tribute for Germany. Yeah. So with two tributes to one, Germany has a chance to take a bit of a lead here. Also the first fight that we have with level 10 abilities on each team. So Sweden with the arrow, that's something that Germany has to watch out for. But first we need to interrupt against Lau, but there comes a jump. Nick already with a hit. The follow-up is there immediately. They're trying to force the fight with Dekatane, controlling the space as best he can. Atan is dropping the ult in the silence, but here comes the move with the keg. Trying to isolate. Oh, and the arrow misses. They isolate oh. Swamp down Artanis, and they get the kill, and the chase is on. And they needed that to hit Cassia, too, to reduce her armor, so Artanis can actually do some damage. Dino able to walk full health here. Skull full energy, but no shields available. Gets stunned out by Nick at the last second. Finally gets the shield. Tries to put damage on Dino, but Dino just bursting them down. Lobber by himself. Garrosh is strong, but not that strong, as Gia and him are trying to retreat. Uther providing heals. Lobber barely alive, but Gia not so much. Is that going to be another kill? Lobber trying to get out of here, but with a Chin and a Nick chasing him, that will be the kill, and now the fort will be the next pickings. Absolutely ruthless. Germany with the mobility here. Chen jumping in. Murden right behind him. Everybody trying to chase them down one after another. For a long time, it honestly seemed like Sweden might get away because of the Uther Ghost that was just healing them over and over and over again. Absolutely incredible here. Eight kills to two. Now the lead in talents as well. They got the curse. The red team in real trouble. A lot of momentum here for Germany. So what are they going to get here? They're already working on that fort with the help of the minions. Fort in the middle and fort in the top. It definitely seems like that first layer of defense will be going down. Sweden decides, all right, let's go ahead and run to the middle. We'll try and defend this. They actually go in straight for a fight. 
G here on the side. He doesn't have that arrow available. If he can try and land it on Dino, that would be useful. He goes even for a Sonic arrow to make sure it's being dodged upon. Ultralis gets thrown into the little fight by Lobber, and here's a keg while Henning is trying to hold that front line with Uther. <laughs> Henning down, and Germany again on the move. They want more than this, and they're still cursed. Those forts are doing absolutely nothing. Nine kills to two, and Germany, it's the pain train coming. They are moving in, and this train for once is on time. Not the Deutsche Bahn here that's playing. We got Zarya down, we got Garrosh down. Easy double kill for Germany. Three level lead nearly as they're going straight for the keep wall. Oh my gosh, Hasu jumping in too. How long is this curse here? Okay, curse is finally going to dissipate now. Fort will start working out, but Hasu is just drinking and handling themselves. Oh my gosh, are they going to get a keep here? This is a nine, ten minute keep on the middle lane. Now they're waiting for the minions to show up. They start to focus it down. Five seconds for Garrosh and four seconds for Zarya. Down to 50% and they don't have any Swedes here to defend it. Yeah, that is rough for the red team. Losing game number one, and then on the second map, you're looking so good initially, and then all of a sudden, Germany just turning up to 11s, and now we have 11 kills to two. They're close on 16, which I believe is the only reason why they even backed off there. They're waiting for the next talent, and Sweden is chasing for that very reason. They want to force that fight while they are still on the same talent. But here comes the top keg play once again. Divine Shield already out on Atanas as they're going for Lauber. They're trying to take him down here. Henning gets isolated with Uther. There's a little bit of trouble. Lauber himself trying to facilitate another Killing gets Death Knight thrown into the rest of the team, but he gets targeted dies! Make them all go to sleep. Here comes the triangle, though, and Sweden's not done. They're forced to stay in this fight. Nick turns around and gets a Storbolt on uh, the target that he can. GF finally bringing an arrow out. Skulls low on HP. Germany is so down to fight right now. Three members have been taken out, and with Death Knight circling around providing potions, Germany easily wipes Sweden 16 to 14, and now they can push and finally finish off that keep. Massive brawl here. Initially a calm game. Everybody just towing the line really making sure that they're not over committing but then it turns into an all-out brawl Germany going from keep to keep playing it super safe here right now not sure if they can end the game since the death timers are still so low we're only 11 minutes in so they go for those keeps they can go for boss now they can go for camps so far ahead 13 kills ahead two levels two and a half and an extra talent absolute momentum on the side of the Blues. Just got to really shout out Germany in their draft here. Taking away that Chin seemed to have been such a pivotal play for them here. Artanis just doesn't hold a candle what Chin can do in this composition. Having a hard time getting in for those full engages and if you are able to get ahead of Sweden and the Zarya Garrosh comp, you see the results. You can turn around the fights as you need and when it comes down to it, Germany has just utilized their heroics that much better than Sweden has. And they absolutely did. And you could tell how Lauba was looking to get that opportunity for them. He was close Trying too. to flip Deckard Kane into the team. But it's always Chen. Again, he controls the backline. He makes these coordinated plays so difficult for them. Once again, here comes Atanis with the ult. But just look at Henning. Henning is already struggling. He's barely keeping himself alive and finally falls. Uther is gone. The stuns are coming out. The chase. And it just looks like Sweden is again going to be eviscerated here. They don't have level 16 talents. They lose two of their heroes. And the entire game is falling apart for them. And Gia, he's trying his hardest to get damage in these fights, bouncing off arrows, trying to look at all the angles, doing all the math, but Nick in particular is just using Murden, jumping in and sitting on Hanzo's face. Hanzo has no chance whatsoever to get proper DPS in. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's finally time to go for the core. Germany wants the 2-0 lead in the best of five series. They're going for it once again. And Sweden desperately trying to defend with the few heroes that they have. They still need to wait for Atanas, but the core is already falling down to 70%. And there comes the play for Skok and Saria is dead. Core dropping, it's down at 50%, and with a huge Night King coming in, a couple of catapults, Fat Elden jumps over. That core is not left for this world. 10% down to five, and Germany will go up two to zero. Still yet to lose a map in this entire tournament. Germany looking absolutely terrifying right now. Yeah. They are currently eight and zero in maps, and oof, game number two. At some point, it just flipped. And at that point, Germany, it was just one-way street heroes of the storm. Sweden was trying to fight back. They were trying to force these fights, trying to regain momentum. First, forcing a fight on when level 13 talents were still available for both teams. But then after that, Germany had a continuous talent advantage that they exploited. Welcome back to our first match here at the Heroes International. Germany taking on Sweden, and they are up 2-0. to zero. And in fact, they have yet to drop a single map, Kaldor. Yeah, they are 8-0 right now. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, they came in as the best team from Europe. They were number one in the standings, but a lot of the matches were close that we had within the top three. Germany was the team that probably did the best here, but still, it's astonishing how well they're doing. And also, 
Our crowd is really awake. I mean, these guys had their coffee. I was walking past and I was like talking to him and all of a sudden my ears just explode. I was like, okay, there's a couple of people here and they are definitely awake. They are awake and they're ready to go. Thank you again for the crowd being here. It is such a pleasure to be here with you guys, hanging out and enjoying these matches. Now, as we get ready for game number three, I'm selfishly going to be pulling for Sweden. I need them to pull off a W here. I need more Yeah, matches. yeah, me too. Yeah, like, it, it, it needs to happen. I know they're capable of it, too. I told you, I want Germany to win. I mean, I have a bit of a bias here. We are in Germany after what? all. What? You yeah, bias? Yeah, a little bit. But I still want a 3-2. Uh, so I want to be here for a while. I want the entertainment factor. Do you remember a couple of years ago where it was like, casters can't be biased. They can't have feelings. It's a Nations <laughs> Cup. If you're not biased at a Nations Cup for your own country, you're doing it wrong. Like, that's you heard just, it here first. Yeah, that's just how it goes. That's why you, I mean, you wouldn't get like two German casts in a game with Germany against whatever. But if you watch any national broadcast of the World Cup, if the guy that commentates, especially in your own language, isn't cheering for your own team, then something is definitely wrong. I agree, man. So, I, yeah. I mean, I just want people to be emotional no matter what when it comes to something. I don't care if it's the Nation's Cup, right? Like, yeah. enjoy yourself. Fill your oats. We're all going to die in like 40 years anyway, so screw it. Like, just have fun. Enjoy yourself, man. A little jaded, a little dark, but that's how life is, right? Players are ready, and we have our map chosen. It's going to be Battlefield of Eternity. More team fights. More team fights. Um... I think in game number two, by the way, I don't think Sweden was like ending or anything. I feel like the draft was just like really going in the way of Germany. They kind of found like the linchpin that breaks it apart. Like after game number one, I have full faith in game three that Sweden bounced back. There were also a couple of moments where they were just forced. They talked about this 13 versus 13 fight. Sure. I mean, you, well, what are your options at that point? If you give them a little bit more leeway, they run a talent advantage over you, have to sit there for the next two minutes playing super passive and just try to get to level 16 until you can finally take a fight. You have to give up tributes until then. You have to give up bosses until then. But if in that situation you can force the battle, get a kill or two, close the gap a little bit before they hit their talent, you might have a chance to claw your way back. So they took a calculated risk. It didn't really work out for them, but it was absolutely understandable. Since it backfired, there was very little chance for them to recover. I totally agree with you. I think game number three, we're going to see much something very much more alike than what happened in the first game of the series. For BOE as well, we begin a lot of Li Ming played in this tournament. Vala as well has been strong in this one as well. She was banned in game yeah. number two, but here she is available for play. Grayman also been picked up, but he hasn't been succeeding as well as you would normally think. He's been having a rough time. Yeah, it's also very map dependent, obviously. A little bit odd to do with how many heroes were already played. What do you need? Do you need that immortal damage? Are there yeah. still other heroes up that could, could contribute? Hans, of course, not available anymore, but you have still Vala as an option. You have Li Ming as an option here. Do you need Greymane? Is that a style that we are more so seeing from the Koreans? We have seen it also from the Europeans, but it's always a question, does he fit the map too? Do you want to have a lot of mercenary camp control, for example, when you're going, let's say, Garden of Terror? Sure. So a lot of factors here. But we could see a Greymane if they are comfortable with this, but I would expect that Li Ming and Vala are the higher priority. I'm still wondering what we're going to see in the top lane. First off, aren't Tannis is usually picked up on this map? Now unavailable, as he was played in game number two. Uh, the normal top laners, most of them have been banned out, but Yorel's already been played. And now suddenly Misha can be something that can get picked up, yep. right? Like, Absolutely. It's interesting. I could definitely see Rexa being played here. I mean, we're heading into game number three. Germany has the lead with a 2-0. This is really the moment where they have match point number one and uh, could make it all the way to the grand final. Yeah. So Sweden has to step it up a big time now in order to make this happen. But they've showcased already throughout the tournament, in particular in game number one, that they definitely have the tools to do that and to make this series a lot closer than it currently seems. Deathwing taken away as well as Hogger. Germany so far has been banning the Hogger, but they've made adjustments based on what they've seen for the map. So we'll see if they make the adjustments for what they normally have seen here. Like a Vala ban wouldn't make uh, a too crazy of sense here. Keep the supports also in mind. We have now four supports eliminated. You have a lot of supports pre-banned, so you could really try and force your opponent's hand a little bit. Chromie, she gets the axe. Sergeant Hammer, another one. You go yeah. up against Germany, you want to ban those tanks out. So Sergeant Hammer is great in something that German that the players on the German team have played with the respective teams, with Washed Up, for example, in the past a lot. So this is an option. I mean, the first year of HUC, they were one of the few teams that was running a lot of Hammer on this. They were just nice and slow, methodical, keeping up the poke. And you called it. Hammer now banned out. Sweden will not be dealing with it. Germany now has the first pick available to them. And let's see what they're, oh, they're discussing something here. Look at this. Yeah, Hammer is gone. I mean, on the one hand, I would have really liked to see her. On the other hand, it just shows that Sweden knows exactly what they're doing and that they have done their homework. I mean, obviously, these teams and players have played against each other a lot. Mm. But there's the early Li Ming pick. So the higher priority for her 
and Ultralisk. He's been playing her quite a bit. You want to go for these resets. She's seen a little bit of a resurgence, especially in this format. And yeah, I absolutely love it. This is something where Ultralisk, when he gets a good angle and can work for these resets, can dominate a team fight again. We've been seeing a new break be pretty common into a player to see a new break being common into Li Ming. Uh, she could always be the counter if you go for Disintegrate, but we've been seeing a lot of wave of force Li Mings, but still, having those beetles is helpful for disrupting those pokes that are coming your way. Uh, and then also, you want the hard engage, right? Uh, which is something that Anubrek does bring to the table. And there's Vala for Gia. Vala taken, and probably going to be an arrow build for her again. But this is exactly the two heroes that we talked about when we were discussing a bit. What are you going to use to damage the Immortal? And of course, both of them can also excel in these team fights. Varian and Sonia. I mean, Varian is something that just can tee up a kill for Li Ming so easily. It was already played back in the days of HGC, where you're trying to go for taunt with Sonya. You could even opt in for a leap and add even more stun to it. Depends a bit on how much sustain you want. Do you pick maybe another melee so you have three opens up more damage potential for Sonya and a more aggressive build for her. A lot that Germany can do here. Greymane gets yeah. now banned too, and in that context, it of course makes a whole lot of sense. I think the first time that we cast it, it in HPC, the two of us, it was exactly Greymane, Varian, Liming. Curse Bullet. You would have Varian go for a taunt, Curse Bullet to follow it up, get down to 50%, and then Liming would come up and clean it up, and you just delete, delete, delete after every 12 seconds. So makes sense that Sweden bans it. And also, you get the double whammy of getting rid of him on BOE, which is where he excels. Kerrigan. Spanned out from Germany. This is the second time they have banned it out in this series of away from Sweden, trying to make sure they don't have to deal with that combo that continues to be strong for them. It's just funny to me to see a team that has Nick and Ultra is going to ban Kerrigan. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's really, yeah. so weird. I wonder if it like, feels betrayal to them. Like, oh, I betrayed Kerrigan. It was uh, like, yeah, normally, normally I'm trying to get these heroes and everybody bans them against me. Now all of a sudden I have to get rid of them. But obviously, in the context, it makes a lot of sense for them. Imperius and Oriel are now uh, locked in, so uh, that gives us more stun and more control. Imperius also has for the longest time been played even as a main tank. He can bring damage, he can bring CC, so he has it all. Together with the new Brack, give a lot of options there. We get White Mane and Orphea. Someone needs to get Lana, Orphea coming out here. Uh, this is the first time that we've seen Orphea this tournament, at least in the games that I've casted. Yep. I think she was not played in the playoffs. We had her in some round robin and qualifier matches, but not in the playoffs thus far, at least not in the games that I was part of. So, very excited to see that. And already, of course, that system coming into play, that 20 heroes are now unavailable because they have been played already. So the teams are adjusting. They're looking what else is available here. What can we play? What can we make work in that context? And our final pick is a Junkrat on the side of Sweden. I gotta say, Orphea being picked up here in the draft, it's exciting. I don't think I've actually had the chance to cast an Orphea game before, ever, in like the history of me casting heroes. So I'm excited for this. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be real good. Like With the positioning and everything you have there, you can definitely slap, especially if your tanks set you up properly. So I'm curious to see how much damage they can do with her. And also, what exactly Ultralisk can do with Li Ming again. If he, for example, gets a good angle on either Vala or on Junker, I mean, there's a lot of squishies on the other side. Yeah. You get your Calamity, you get the combo through, you move in, get the reset, and they just pop through them. That's definitely something that we could see from Ultralisk, especially in the late game fights. So the front line, they will have to do do a lot of work to ensure that he does not get the position against the damage dealers. How do you think the Sonya versus Imperius matchup is? Does it really come down to the Impales? Yeah, I, on, the, on the solo lane or yeah, just like in lane, general? Yeah. Yes, I mean, definitely. Sonya has also quite a lot of sustain that she can bring in there, but I would assume that we're going to get rotations towards the top anyways. So both of them probably, rot maybe even rotating down to the fight for the first mercenary camp and trying to make it a five versus four, unless they are totally uh, willing to just exchange camps and somebody's going to rotate top in the early stages and uh, each team walks away with one of them. Okay, and it's very important here for Sweden to get this W. If not, they will be falling down the loser's bracket and then facing yep. off whoever takes the win in South Korea versus the United States. And that will be playing for the Grand Finals. Here we go, jumping into it. Kaldor, please introduce the Germany team. On the left side, we have for Germany with a 2-0 lead, uh, Ultralis playing Liming, Hazo, Ops plays Sonya, Nick on Varian, Death Knight with White Mane, and Dino on Orphea. Looking for a W against Germany, and they needed to stay alive in this series. From Granta on Imperius, Hending on Oriel, Skog on Junkrat, Labra on Anubrek, and Gia on Vala. So, Sweden, they gotta take this one. If they lose here, they drop down into the loser's bracket, as you already mentioned. And they would very much like to avoid that. You wanna, don't want to go through those extra games. 
if you're planning to participate in the grand final. Already, Nick, of course, looking for that level four where Varian really comes online, becomes a real hero, not an oversized minion. At that point, he can really set up the damage dealers, particularly, of course, mages that have a lot of burst damage available to them. Yeah. And Vala with the first stack on the arrow build that was pretty much available with the draft that they had. I mean, just adding on to your point, being in the winner's bracket here is such a luxury. You're able to watch your opponent, see their drafts. At some point, they may reveal something that might be a big tip off of the grand finals. You can use that small amount of knowledge to turn the game around on them. I mean, just like we saw Germany in the last game where they turned around the yeah. competition we've been seeing from Sweden. It's so important to get this W. And also, the team that comes through the winner bracket into the grand final, they get an advantage with map and first pick. So we don't do this thing where somebody is an entire map up because they absolutely hate that system. Uh, just super confusing, especially for people that tune in late. Yeah. But there is definitely a winner of bracket advantage outside of you just having to play less games, having more time to prepare for your opponent, and also having just the time you know, to, to relax a little bit and uh, just enter the grand final from a calm peace of mind. From Granta in a 1v2 here on the top lane between Ultras and Hasselwabs, and seemingly from a health bar just winning it. Yeah, this is actually the scenario where now at the bottom of the map, Sweden was already looking at one camp and locked it in easily because they had a numbers advantage. But the 2v1 setup at the top did not quite work as well as Germany was hoping for, so they couldn't take the camp. Which means that if Sweden just moves a few heroes towards the top, they can claim it. Only reason they are not doing it Orpia. is because they are seeing at the bottom an opportunity to take towers down and could maybe even get Dainu. Nice Q there from Dino, able to dash his way. What HP? He's trying to play the range and he gets away with 39 HP, but Death Knight, who is rotating to help out his teammate, was like, oh no, gets in trouble, gets knocked back, able to survive just barely. Nick, however, in trouble. It's How is nobody <laughs> dead? It's ring around the Rosie with health bars. <laughs> How did nobody die? First it was Dino below 50 HP, then they go for Death Knight, all of them nearly dead. Nick even gets stunned into the fort. But I mean, the fact alone that the fort is nearly destroyed and down to half yeah. HP or below half HP is already a testament to how strong Sweden is with this particular push. They have a Nuburak and his beetles can soak up a couple of the power shots. But that was some crazy good play from Sweden, but also amazing that Germany kept all their players alive. Just imagine Sweden taking both of them down. Yeah, they got two kills there. Look at that experience bar right now. It's equal right now, but we've moved on to level 5, and that gets you closer to level 10. Those things start to snowball really quickly on Battlefield of Eternity, and Germany, knowing that, did everything in their power to get away from those kills, and they succeeded. Now, we're going to be heading into the Immortal spawning in five seconds. Already have our camps grabbed right on time. Germany looking for a pick, though. Runs across the map, goes for a taunt, and boom, there goes Junkrat. German efficiency. They get one opportunity, and they immediately use it. But up. the fight isn't over yet. Hazu. Gets taken down, good stun, and Sweden reacting. That would have been pretty frustrating for them. They had multiple kill opportunities and then this happens. But once again, without any mana left, the kill and it's oh a double my. and Nubarok down and so is Oriel. German beast mode right at the first objective. They are going to take the halftime show here and Sweden must be really frustrated. Orphea outputting that damage, 9k damage so far with the help of Lee Ming. This double mage setup working out. Jeremy? taking a lead on some mortal phase, a full half health bar already set up for them. Sweden waiting for all five to get back as a new Breck and Ariel have just spawned. Gia will start working on that Immortal while Swamp Granta has to buy time with the help of Skog. Yeah, G Sweden has to now go for it. The meatballs, they have to get spicy or this is going to end rough because the Sausage Boys are so far doing a fantastic job going for the Immortal again, trying to take it down here. A little bit of a distraction over to the right, but a nice wall stun. Nick going in a bit too deep and paying the price as he attempted to slow Sweden down, which he succeeded in. Yeah. But, of course, it came at a cost. He is sacrificed. Big shield on the first Immortal. M the best that you can get here is the fort. But even that is already a huge win if you can make it happen. It's all coming down to how much Vala and Junkrat can really do to remove the shield and the hit points quickly. I mean, learning from the School of Lobber, right? If you're not dying for your team, you're not playing tank right. Going in for the flank on the right side, got all the DPS away from the Immortal, and you are correct here. We will have this front wall taking some damage from this Immortal. Germany now starting to recuperate down the bottom lane, but what's more impressive to me is the experience. Ridiculous. I mean, with level 7 for Vala, it's just like the Immortal just disappears. Gets the gate, and that's it. So... This is actually still pretty okay for Sweden. They yeah. lost the first Immortal. That was a huge shield for Germany. But with a kill against Varian, there was very little that Germany could do to capitalize on it. But they're forcing that fight again. So Gia is trying to get himself a couple of extra stacks for the arrows. Currently looking at eight. Skog 
successfully escaping here as Ultralis was attempting to chase him down. But does, they're still on level 8, both of them, so it's getting real interesting here. Dino has great control on Warfia. Those Shadow Walls that he keeps putting in there, moving in in between the fights. He looks like he's putting himself in danger. There he queued into the fight, was surrounded by three people, but then immediately queued again and was out. Great play yeah. here on Orphea. It does come down to a situation if Orphea ever does get picked or locked into a situation, she will get picked off, but Dino is riding that line perfectly so far. There's a bit of a flank attempt here by Nick. They want to get an angle on particularly Junkrat, but instead it is Oriel that gets targeted. They want the counter kill and they cannot get it. Imperius now even moving down to the bottom of the map. Turn this once again into a 4v4. But Germany starts to walk away with these kills and they nearly get another one. Lauber gets hit by Ultralisk and has to move himself out of the fight. Oh my gosh, another time coming in. Nick just keeping up his aggression, flanking in. There is a Swamp Granta coming around from the side here, and he will have his Impale available. He goes for it. Geo steps up and tries to get the auto attacks out. Will it be enough to find the kill? Oh. That Knight providing the heal, and a new gets picked, and 10 connects for Germany. Yeah, we got Leap, and we also had the wave of force for Liming. It is Ultralis just popping off with these resets. They are an entire level ahead. The level 10 ability allows them to easily go for the fort here. They're going to destroy it for sure, and we see that aggression. And we've also highlighted during the draft that it is an option here for Hazo Ops to go for Leap. We saw him mainly pick Wrath of the Berserk in the previous games where he played Sonya, but that was not a different map, that was not a different context, mainly Infernal Shrines. Now you have Varian who can tee you up with a good taunt and then the stun will connect through Leap. And of course you have two damage dealers that have tons of bursts that can capitalize on that position. And this is what they're looking for. Get these quick and easy kills, Force to five versus four, and then just snowball through the battle. Sweden is desperately trying to get level 10 just so they have a chance here to fight back against their opponent, but they can't even move up on this immortal phase. It's just being burned down. Finally, Gia gets his first arrow off, but that's already at the cost of what? They're immortal? Yeah. Being down to 25% before they even get a lick of damage? This is a huge problem around the second immortal phase. If your opponent gets an early level 10, then you're in so much trouble here. And they're once again attempting to force a fight. They drive it past Varian cocooning him and trying to get the fight going. Riptire didn't do anything for him. Aegis is out saving the day, but he has the leap and the kill. Perfect timing here, and Nick is pushing forward. Full health here, has that taunt up in five seconds. Would love to lock down a target. Lion's Ball coming out to slow everyone down. Henning is to be the target for the taunt. Here it, oh, the knockback at the last second. Henning able to save himself. Wave of force as well. Finally, it's Gia who gets locked in, and that's gonna be three members deleted from Sweden. And now they have to deal with the top lane, which has an immortal pushing down and taking a fort. Absolutely fantastic for Germany. They are going through Sweden like hot butter through cheese as they are just coming in, taking one kill after another. Pretty spectacular, honestly. And it also highlighted in the last team fight a bit of a problem that Sweden has. They have Aegis and Oriel to really just like shut down any targeted or focused damage. But at the same time, it also puts a bullseye on the target for yeah. the leap of Sonya. So for her, it gets really easy to just jump in and do tons of damage there. I mean, there, they were just waiting for the Aegis to fall off and they followed up with the Crushing Jaws, right? And it's just a complete deletion of a target. So far, this Orphea has been impressing from Germany, just like the rest of their roster. 13 about to connect for Germany as they move towards this 3-0 over Sweden. Now, Sweden's got to dig deep. They've lost two Immortals so far, lost the first layers of defense. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because they started out this game looking dominant, right? The bottom fort was burned down 80%. Yeah. Since then, they haven't been able to do anything. And I come back to what I said at the beginning. Imagine they get those two kills back then. The fort falls, yeah. they have a bit more control over the bot lane, they grab experience, a lead that leads probably to level 7 on the first objective, maybe level 10 on the second. It could have been a completely different map, but now Germany is just taking them down where they stand. Another great oh lead from Hazu. The Eagles saving the day for a moment, but only delaying the inevitable at the end. Down goes Vala, everybody else is already low. Swan Grotta with an attempt to kill him. Not even that works out. He dies. Oriel is dead. Skork is on the run. Sweden. They are getting murdered by Germany in this game. A 2-0, it's match point for Germany, and things are just looking fantastic for them. I've been complimenting Dino in his gameplay, but Hasu right now has been turning these team fights. Sweden was in a position there to get two kills, and Hasu comes in and gets the perfect three-man stun, locks it all up for his team. They were able to spread out. Gia had nothing to do afterwards, and now Germany who is pushing forward, get some damage on the keep in the top right, and preparing for an immortal that will be spawning in 15 seconds. 13 kills to two. Utter domination from the blue team. Talent advantage once again. Sweden just finds themselves continuously in this position where whenever the objective spawns, they down a talent. 
and it's a real bad situation for them. Where do you fight? Do you just accept that you're fighting with the Talon's advantage? Do you split out on the lane? You maybe give up the halftime show and hope that you are then able to take the turn the tide? Yeah. Top lane, I mean, there's another wave they can get, but is there going to be enough experience? They're choosing for defense, but they're already prepped with a check scenario on the bottom lane with that night camp pushing in. That definitely will take the keep if it's not dealt with. It's just a matter of time. Sweden trying to decide here. The one thing about Sweden that I do like is they will make a decision as a team, period. They're willing to enter the team and win as a team no matter what. And that is something that can always get you back in the match. So Germany will respect that and make sure to play around the map. And finally, with Catapults being dealt in the bottom lane, they step up and go for the halftime show. Yes, they gave up the first 50%. They took level 13 and now they're going to make the play here. This is going to be a do or die moment. Sweden has to win this one. They have to make an impact here. They have to find an answer. Nick trying to shield. Gets done. No follow-up just yet. Everybody is protecting. Once again, they're trying to zone them out here. Azu with a oh. leap, and Imperius is dead. Bump Granta was going for the flank there, and they was, Germany was ready for it, catching him. Aegis comes out, but this going to be another target being set up. Lobber trying to retreat here. The Shadow Walt's allowing for Orphia to move forward. Aegis gets popped. Gia just trying desperately to escape here. Heals are coming, but he just can't move. Finally, a Vault will connect. A new bracket's deleted, though, and now Ultralis gets to go in. Reset after reset. <laughs> this man is gaming. <laughs> Ultralis is popping through them one at a time. 16 kills to two. They're focusing on the top and the fight isn't even over yet another taunt comes out as Junkrat is targeted and here's the way for force play by Ultralis can't stop won't stop he comes in he gets the damage gets the kills and they go straight for the first keep as Hazobs who goes for the objective Nick is just relentless look at him just chasing down every assassin not giving them a chance another lion small into a kills from Bronto trying to hold his own in a one before the Imperius and you might be an angel but you ain't that strong man he gets picked off 16 to 13 keeping the top right killed off Immortal coming to end this game Germany once at 3-0 and they're gonna do it safely absolutely insane absolutely crazy barring some kind of miracle for Sweden Germany could walk away with that 9-0 map score in the tournament incredible bot lane gets softened up already heroic ability cooldowns are coming back online we are 12 13 minutes into the game only 20 stacks for Vala on her level one Scott is doing what he can He's putting the damage numbers out, but it's just not enough. The CC train that Germany unleashes here is so difficult to stop. The leaps of Hazo, the taunts. Once again, Hazo getting ready for it. They have Lauba right down their sights. But it is very, and it gets blown up by Junkrat. Nicely done. Sweden working on the defense. They might just be able to hold off a little bit longer. Yeah, they got a chance. 20 seconds for Imperius to have his heroic up. Raid of here too. Vala and Junkrat are working on the Immortal. That keep is definitely going to go down, but at least can keep up with this defense knowing that the tank is missing. The one thing that has been huge, though, for Germany has been Hasuwaps and his leaps, and that is still up and available. Immortal finally getting to the core, starting to work on those shields. Sweden doing their best to hold it down. Imperius goes in, finally gets the impale, looks at Ultralis. Ultralis uses his teleport in, so Granta gets blown up. Hasuwaps in the front line here as they're going for the core. Ege is again saving the day for another second, but Aureal is already eliminated. The core is down to 84%. Hasuwaps again a little bit low, and here comes Gia with a quick wall forward. They take him down. The core at 81%. They're still holding for Fight. a bit longer and Sweden did it they lost everything but the core but they haven't lost the game just yet and they're closing in on level 16 talents that's right 16 right around the corner and that will put them on even talents but the question is for how long Germany already at 18 and a quarter and pushing for that level 20 and still just to note Sweden has yet to win an immortal phase in this game the next one will be the fourth immortal of the match. Debilitation as an adjustment from Anubarak, and usually I hate that talent with the passion of a thousand fiery suns, but in this context, I actually really understand what he's trying to do here. You can shut down a lot of the damage on the side of Germany Double if you main, are yeah. connecting this properly. So they're not looking to get a big stun out. They have already CC control. They try to limit the damage a bit, stop the bleeding, allow Vala to get more damage through, allow the damage dealers to just stay in the fight a bit longer before they have to slowly retreat. So I like the adjustment from Lava in this context quite a bit. Just to give you an update of what that talent does at level 16, if you hit an Impale or a Burrow Charge on any of the targets, you reduce your spell power by 50%. And with Orphea and uh, Li Ming putting out spell power, it's a great change. Especially with that Impale. Yep. So that's going to be big if he can land any of those, reduce the damage, buy them a bit of time. Sweden, they have to be aggressive, of course. They know the level 20 is going to be up next for Germany. And they oh. need to also take some of the structures down. There's the leap. The Aegis! Hasu. They are alive! They're still alive! And Hazu 
falls! And Altruist came on the side there. Lobber did a great job of popping his shield and coming over and eating the shot for his teammate. That was about to actually connect on two squishies. Sweden is in the game here. It's looking dire, but they're in the game. Yeah, Sweden, they are still there. They are still two talent, so two levels behind, and there is that level 20, which eventually is going to become a problem. They got to defend, but it is a five versus four for another 40 seconds, and Sweden, they are fighting tooth and nail. They are still in it to win it. Dino taking the camp at the bottom and trying to apply a little bit more lane pressure. And here comes the red team. Sweden on their way to the Immortal. And Vala is chunking it down big time. Bump Granta on the backside. And Germany is able to sneak a quick four on one. The Immortal gets down to 50%. But now you have 40 seconds where Imperius won't be here. And Sweden needs to find a kill. They look for a full combo on Nick, but can't follow it up with the Immortal in the way. Imperius dying here is an absolute disaster. 5v4 in another 4 seconds, and you have an opponent that still has Taunt and Leap available. It's going to be nearly impossible Web for in two seconds. not lose another hero. They yet. have to go for a kill nail. Sonya just came up, but she's not in the fight yet. If they go for the web, it's going to be Ult the Aegis. Ultra. No, the stun. Lauba does not get the stun, and the cocoon has been removed. They got to retreat again. They also have some catapults griefing in the middle once again. These guys are fired, attacking the tower instead of the core. Not that it matters anymore. Level 20 is ready. Numbers advantage for Germany. This looks like it's going to likely be the end. What can Sweden do here? They need to hope for a miracle. I like that play, though. They didn't finish off the Immortal to force a halftime show, so they had to force Germany to go that route. That way they bought more time for Imperius yes. to get. They gave themselves one more chance to get a team fight, and this is it. Do or die. Yeah, they have to go for it now, and the Immortal can't go over to Germany either, so this is really the moment to make your play. And they're just coming in. They throw the Hail Mary, the whip already missing. They're looking for any opportunity. Dino darting around the edges, trying to get some damage in against Gia. Vala still fine. But boy, oh boy, look, at they, they played so safe. Germany knows that if they just buy some time, the core is going to get destroyed by catapults. It's Winian time. Look at this. There's so many catapults. Germany doesn't have to fight. They just have to waste Sweden's time. They are wasting their time. Aegis comes out now on a new back. Leaf on the back line going straight for Skog. Skog able to keep up the pressure here, though. And finally, Imperius will get deleted. Gia coming on the back left. He's going to have to try and force something. He's actually sitting in the side, trying to wait for Ultras to jump in. Ultras does get picked off, but look at the core. It's dropping as the cannons continue to siege away. It's down 30%. Hasselhoff's running in and he'll be the one to put the death needle into Sweden here as they try to go up 3-0. to zero, Slam into another slam and Sonia keeping it up, hitting, doing whatever he can to just stay alive, but it's all for naught as Germany takes the 3-0 and Hasselhoff dances on the court. Germany with a 3-0 victory over Sweden. Absolutely insane performance by the team here towards the end. Sweden looking for that fight, looking for the win, yeah. and Germany's saying, well, we don't have to fight you. If we just waste your time, you either lose to the catapults or you have to send heroes back, which allows us to take the immortal, which makes you lose too. So the dumbest thing we could do is just give you the fight that you're looking for. I can't believe how well Hasuop is playing. I kept looking at Dino because his Orpheo is new. And I was like, yeah, yeah. ooh, shiny. And you forget about <laughs> Sonia over here. But Sonia with the leaps was so perfect. Every time that Sweden had a chance to get a Sweden to be going their way, Hasuop would come flying in. And that two to second stun will allow for his teammates to reposition and secure kills. Like Hasuop right now is just playing for the MVP of the tournament. That was such a great play from him. And part of the reason why they have been so undefeated is because they have that play from him, that experience that continues yeah. to be showcased. I'm just blown away that they were able to win this without dropping a series. Yeah. Sweden yesterday played out of their mind and they're looking so strong here and a lot of people have said like hey I actually changed my mind on who I think is going to win this tournament I think Sweden is in the finals I think Sweden might be taking sure. all of it they are building up momentum they're playing well and even in series that go down to the wire they keep that composure towards the end that allows them to win but Germany Take down Poland, take down Korea and now Sweden without on dropping a map they look terrifying yeah I mean, the cool part about it, too, is, like, Swamp Grotto was usually playing in the shadows, right? He was trying to look for those flanks and whatnot, and they account for everything. They're ready for those flanks. There was two times they turned it around on them. Swamp Grotto's trying to set up his team for a victory, and it suddenly looks like he's, like, ending, right? Yeah. Because they're so aware of what's happening on the batter. An incredible job there by Germany. They go up 3-0, and they'll be moving forward in the winner's bracket. We'll see them in the grand finals, but we got more matches coming our way, Caldor. We got more matches coming, and we also have a quick interview before we head into the next series, which will be in the loser's bracket. We're going to go for Korea versus the US next. 